Okay, we just wanted to do a quick combat demonstration video. We've had a few questions on how the combat actually works. Um, I know people have seen that it's not the, uh, the usual turn-based method that most CRPGs um, or the like are implementing. And we wanted to kind of give a, a brief overview of what that's like. Um, first, I'll probably go over some HUD stuff so you can actually see what I'm doing in all this. On the right-hand side of the screen are your portraits. Uh, right now, I just have the one, but these would be your four party members and anybody you have biohacked for the duration that they are in that state. Uh, below that is a note field. You can type notes in here anytime. And on the left-hand side is the game feed. You can collapse those two. Um, and surrounding those are these other buttons that are more party control, and we'll get into those in a different update that has a full party when we do something a little more grandiose for that. Um, and in the center of the screen are your four inventory items that you can have equipped. Um, you can select different ones of these and they change out your action buttons. And we're mainly going to be going through action buttons, so I'm going to wait to get into those. Um, but my plan here is to enter this building where there is a patrolling guard indicated by this red arrow and try to kill him. And I'll be going through all the steps involved in that. Um, with a building like this, there's lots of ways into it. Um, in this case, I'm just going to be trying to jump through this window, but I probably could have gone in. Um, through roof access, or there's this warehouse entrance down here. Um, worth noting that enemies that you can't see but are nearby um, and are heard are indicated by these arrows. This one's red, so I know it's hostile. Um, but this kind of gives you a good idea of how to plan your route um, and know the direction enemies are headed. Um, in this case, I know he's heading back into this room, and so I'm going to wait to move until he kind of turns that route around. And this is indicated by my player's field of view, not necessarily mine. And my player's field of view is indicated by that, this kind of volumetric fog of war following him around. It'll be a little more easy to see once I'm inside. But the, his line of sight is what is required to actually see this enemy and therefore target him. Um, but now he's moving away, so I'm going to try to move inside. the locker. Okay, and when he comes out, I'll initiate combat, and I'll explain the combat bar. And to start that off, I'm going to do an attack with my SMG that a lot of handguns have. Um, it's called Quick Shot, and it allows my character to move a short distance, um, and then kind of set down a pawn, and from that location, any enemies within that field of view are able to be hit. And so if I were to set this here, I know I have a line of sight to this now uh, visible enemy. And you also probably saw the timeline come up. And from here there's um, quite a bit of info, but there's a wait bar, a turn bar, and an execute bar. And I started the turn bar because combat actually hasn't initiated yet. And so I'm just going to be taking a turn. But what essentially is going to happen is when I am attempting my action, my quick shot, that takes a certain amount of time dictated by my player's um, stats and how difficult it is to use the weapon. And that's going to make me travel down this, um, down this bar until I hit the execute bar. And the execute bar is essentially me pulling the trigger. And when other people join the combat bar, they're going to roll initiative and pop up somewhere on this wait timeline, part of the timeline, and then be traveling down themselves. And then they'll be taking their actions and then executing them. Okay, and I also turn on this function, you'll be able to see the dice rolls, which you'll see probably when he's about to attack me. Um, but suppressing fire, uh, you'll notice he got stalled when I hit him. Suppressing fire does two things. It allows me to hit anybody within these tiles that I have selected kind of in this cone. Um, I roll to hit anybody in these. I also roll to try to delay them. And so I have a pretty big negative hit modifier for this, but it allows me to really quickly try to stall a lot of people. You now a shotgun would be a pretty good tool for this. I don't think my character has that much skill for an SMG, so I don't know what I'm able to do with it. But you'll kind of get the idea. I'm just going to spray some shots out with it after I get hit. Um, but before I do that, um, his turn came up, 
and I have this pause function on so I can actually see these roles. And these are really beneficial to see because these are going to be kind of simulationist environmental um, challenge roles you're trying to overcome. Um, and it would be a lot easier to see them up here than in the game feed, but I can go through these quick. So these are all the elements that um, he was trying to overcome. Um, the culmination of them was nine, um, this being my challenge role that he was trying to overcome. And his hit rolls dictated by these dice turn out to be an 11. And I also see his damage roll was two. So I know this is gonna be like a lesser ailment. Um, but he rolled two D8s for that. And so that probably could have been a lot bigger than that. Um, but we go into the, and the Kickstarter page and on the page below this, um, I go into detail on what uh, each one of these are. Um, they're pretty much environmental factors, except if you're in melee, and then there's a dodge and a block that actually uh, get rolled at this uh, exact same time. So I didn't install them, unfortunately, at all there. But uh, Precise Aim is another attack that a lot of... Um, projectile weapons have, and this allows you to uh, hit certain body parts, which is really beneficial in this game with our wound system because it allows you to focus damage on particular body parts that you might be trying to hinder or know are already damaged. So for instance, um, if you're trying to kill something indomitable like a copper face and you just don't have the right tools for it, you might be better off just running away from combat completely and hiding and hitting his legs in the meantime, which will slow him down. Um, in this case, I'm just going to aim for the head. You can kind of get the idea on how you can use that with the wound system we have. If I were, of course, to hit. Um, so speaking of being able to run away from combat, I'm going to try to move away from them. And you're going to see a last known position indicator pop up right here. And this is beneficial um, to view because this allows you to see where enemies last knew where you were and the exact spot they're going to try to go to. Um, and you're able to kind of use this to your advantage by being able to know how to flank enemies or being able to uh, coerce enemies away from other party members that you might want to keep alive or away from danger. Um, in this case, it might interrupt his turn, but I'm going to run back and attack him again and see if I can kill him quick. So when enemies die, they are conveniently taking a nice fetal position, um, which is actually something I can pick up. So normally a dead, uh, dead body like this would alert enemies of the same faction to go into their highest um, alert phase, in which they would call for backup if available, or um, essentially be running around their normal patrol route trying to find out what happened uh, around this area. Um, and in a game like this, you don't want to have a large group of enemies trying to chase you down because that would be extremely difficult to A, win, or near impossible, a fight of that caliber. Or it'll mess up your mission, you'll be able to, they'll relock doors or anything else. So getting rid of bodies is a good idea. In this case, I need to make some room for them. And, you know, you can throw them in any room, you can throw them off ledges, it doesn't matter. And anything you throw in the game actually utilizes gravity. Um, I'll explain that after I throw this guy. And nobody will find him now. Items, grenades, and of course bodies all take gravity in consideration when being thrown. Um, your throw accuracy is actually determined by a roll. Uh, you select a tile on the ground and you are rolling to hit as close to that tile as possible. 
Um, unless you're highly trained, you're probably not going to hit that exactly, but we choose a random point around it um, that you'll actually be throwing to, and so you're just kind of rolling to mitigate how, how poor your throw is. So this can be taken into consideration when you're trying to do really uh, intricate grenade throws through small windows or cracks or something. Um, more often than not, those might just bounce right back at your feet. Um, but we go into more detail about all the kind of simulationist systems that this gameplay has, um, uh, especially in the combat, uh, in the text below, so check that out. And we'll be having an interview later on uh, during the campaign that goes into probably quite a bit more detail about this. This just kind of skim the surface. Um, and so stay tuned for that, and we'll have more updates out soon. Thanks, everyone.